very early 90s I studied with Dr. Ann Wigmore in Puerto Rico and at that time raw food was really roots and shoots. Everything was blended or salads. It wasn't much more than that. But I knew that if people were going to stick to a raw food regime that food had to be healthy and, and also taste good because we're sentient beings and we are, you know, we have to feed our spirit as well as our body. We have an emotional body that needs to be comforted. And so it was very important to me to make the food taste great, look great, mm -hmm. and really mimic what people were used to. And, and I found that over time that my goal really had to be not just making it as good as, but making it better than what they're used to. So it has to not only Pizza has to not only resemble the real thing, but it has to taste better. Otherwise, people will just reach for the old stuff. We want them to reach for the new stuff. <laughs> and then, of course, they'll feel great afterwards. One of the things that we do at Living Light is to teach people how to make fantastic sauces and marinades and dressings, bring balance to those kinds of things so that they can put mix them with the simple foods and they can feel a sense of being satisfied while eating simple foods. We teach them how to set up their kitchen so that it's really easy and quick if they're working all week, which most of us do, to be able to have foods ready when they come home so they don't just stop and grab something on the way home because they have something to look forward to when they get home that's already prepared or easy to prepare and, and so we support them in that way as well as teaching them how to make foods that will knock the socks off of their friends who can't believe that raw food could be anything more than salads. Um, but they also can keep this as a lifestyle that is easy for them to maintain because it has to be. Otherwise, they're going to go off of, you know, they're going to go back to the old way of being. Most of our students and people who come to our site from all over the world and come to, to our school find out about us on the internet because people are out there searching for information. They find out that there's great things out there, they see that there's places to come and learn how to make healthy living and how delicious and how to make it easy. People are sick and tired of being sick and tired. They are taking their health into their own hands. They no longer can trust doctors. They can't trust the pharmaceuticals. They don't trust their food anymore because they keep hearing stories about how it makes them sick. They're fat and they're tired of being fat and the raw food diet is is the answer. It's the answer to all of that. We're going back to the basics of our fresh produce. That's where it used to be. It used to be before the 1940s it was all organic, before they invented the, the whole pesticide industry to figure out how to do deal away with the toxic chemicals they created to poison people so they figured they could figure out how to poison the bugs. So we're returning to that and that information now is available on the internet and available for people to go off and, and find. And it's a matter of just sorting through all of the propaganda where you actually have to just follow the money trail to see who's, who's promoting this and why back to who's promoting back to a natural way. As a pioneer in the vegetarian movement and also in the vegan movement, I can tell you that the raw movement is gaining popularity much more rapidly than the other two. Uh, when I first started teaching vegetarian cooking, you couldn't buy sprouts, you couldn't buy tofu. I had to teach people how to sprout and how to make their own tofu at home. And now, of course, every grocery store, it doesn't have to be an organic health food store, carries sprouts and tofu. It's common. And the same thing with vegan cuisine. When I first transitioned to vegan cuisine, it was very strange. People didn't understand not only will you, where you, will you get your protein, but where will you get your calcium. And now you can find alternatives to milk and uh, other forms of dairy and even eggs everywhere. And it's going to be that way with raw foods too. The reason that raw foods is gaining popularity so much more rapidly is because with the raw food diet, we don't tell people they have to give up anything. With vegetarianism, they had to give up meat. With veganism, they had to give up eggs and cheese. But with raw food, we're not saying that. We're saying add more raw food to what you're already doing. We can show you how to make it taste better than cooked food. And the things that 
don't make you feel good, you'll naturally stop reaching for, and you'll start reaching for the things that taste great and make you feel great. And so it's less threatening. And that's why there's a raw food revolution happening all over the world. We've, had, we've graduated over people from over 30 different countries at our school. This is not a localized thing in California or New York or even in the United States. It's all over the world. We support people wherever they are on their journey and the more that fruits and vegetables they can add to their diet, the better off they're going to be. So it's not a matter of you got to give it all up, you got to change today, just starting adding more. And as people get used to how great it is, how wonderful the taste is, how much better they feel, how their illnesses go away, they start letting go of the things that aren't serving them. And pretty soon they find it's like, wow, this is really easy and I've never felt better in my life. I'm reversing aging, I'm reversing my diseases. All those food allergies that I didn't realize I had are now gone. Beautiful salad bar that they can make themselves and people love doing that. Um, but they also have some richer pâtés and cheeses and as I mentioned before, lasagna and cheesecake and things like that so that they can pick and choose and they can start to appreciate the salads as much as they appreciate the foods that mimic what they're used to. And over a period of time, they're choosing less of the richer foods and more of the simpler foods until the richer foods are just for celebration. And the simpler foods are what they choose on a daily basis because they recognize even though those other foods are organic and, and, and you know, beautifully prepared raw foods, they still bring their energy level down a little bit compared to the simpler foods. As people start to eat more raw food, they, they detox emotionally, not just physically. They detox emotionally and we see students who come into the school after only a weekend of eating raw food and we're not talking about simple raw food, we're talking about gourmet raw food which is still fairly rich. You know, I mean, we're, we're, we're feeding people that are used to eating rich food, and so we don't immediately shock them by just giving them bananas and apples. Well, we're giving them uh, nut cheeses and lasagna and foods like that, and even that will, will spark detox, and not just physical detox, but emotional detox, well, where their bodies are starting to speak to them and telling them how they feel, and their feelings are, they, they, they start crying, and ha feeling sense of overwhelming um, empowerment. It's, it's really profound. Actually, I think that raw culinary arts is the most exciting culinary art that there is. As a chef, I can tell you that it is very exciting and really fun to be able to create foods that really satisfy people and on a much deeper level than all of those great foods that the foodies go after, you know, and spend a fortune for. Um, it, it's because it satisfies you on so many different levels. That's just how you set up your kitchen. Um, how to prepare the food when you bring it home from the grocery store. What kinds of foods need to be eaten as soon as you get home compared to the ones that'll last for several days in the refrigerator. Maybe taking a few hours once a week to prepare a few things that'll last all week long so you do have something to look forward to when you get home. And, and you, you want to get home to eat it because you don't want it to go to waste and, and you can enjoy it at home in an atmosphere that is a healthy atmosphere where food was made with love because that's so important and fast foods are not made with love. People who are making the foods in those fast food restaurants, most of them hate their jobs. How can they be putting love into our food? And that's something that is really important. It's something that science isn't measuring yet, but those of us who are conscious of the foods that we eat know when food is made with love and when it's not. Yeah. If someone wants to find out more about uh, what you guys do, where can they go? Well, we'd love to have people visit our website, rawfoodchef.com. We have four green businesses besides our culinary school. We have a cafe, we have a marketplace, and we have an eco-friendly inn. And we're, we're located in Fort Bragg, California, which is on the north coast, north of San Francisco. Beautiful Mendocino coast. And we'd love to have people come and visit and eat in our cafe. We do an expo the fourth weekend of August every year. And we bring in some of the top raw leaders uh, and, and, and leaders in the health movement. Uh, and, and we also talk about sustainability and a lot of different subjects during that three-day weekend. And we'd love for people to come for that as well.